What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Mechanism, and today guys we're going to be messing around with the Thermal Evaporation Plant, which was previously known as the Solar Evaporation Plant, and before that the Salination Plant. Now this is used for two different things, today we're going to be using it to turn water into brine, but it can also be used to turn brine into lithium. Now there's a lot of different factors that are going to determine how it works for you, depending on how large you build it, it is a scalable multi-block structure. Today I'm going to be making it almost to the maximum size, we're not going to go all the way, we can upgrade it a little bit in the future, but there is a lot of crafting that has to be done today, so we should jump right into that. So there's a lot of stuff in here. I did separate it into kind of a weird fashion just because it's going to help me kind of understand what we're going through because there is a lot of different stuff that we need to craft. So the first thing that we can craft is going to be a pump. We're only going to be using one pump today to supply water to this, so we can just hop over here and we can quickly craft that. Now, I guess I should just grab all this into my inventory, but I want to make sure that we're getting the exact amounts of everything. So, the next thing that we're going to be doing is making a tank. So, we're actually going to be making uh, not the basic tank. We're going to start with the basic fluid tank because we have to. It's really cheap to make and it can hold 14 buckets. So, we're going to grab that and then we're going to go and we're going to make the advanced fluid tank, which is pretty much just... Uh, upgrading it with the same pattern except you're replacing the redstone with enriched alloy and then you're putting the basic fluid tank in the spot that was empty before so we're gonna craft this this can hold twice as much so we got 28 buckets in there it's really not that much that's going in there but this will give us a little bit of storage space for some of the brine that we're producing because eventually we're going to be using the brine to get to the four times ore processing and eventually it'll lead to the five times ore processing um, but we're not actually going to go through the machines today that'll be in an episode or two so we're just going to be storing it today okay so the next thing that we're going to go into crafting is going to be the advanced solar generator now we're going to want four of these for the top of the thermal evaporation plant you can use less it doesn't require all four of them for it to be constructed but it's not going to work as effectively if you don't have all of these on there because you're not actually supplying power to this outside of having these advanced solar generators so you'll notice if you start getting rid of these the temperature of the tower itself is actually going to start going down so we're going to be making all four of them and i'll discuss where they get placed later but just remember if you want to replace these with a different block then you can and i will discuss that in a little bit but i would suggest crafting all four of these so these are actually what pretty much all the resources in here are directed to words because to craft one of these you need four solar generators which require uh three solar panels which are actually kind of expensive so that's what we're going to be crafting right now is all the solar panels so we're going to need 48 of those then we can hop back over in here and i want to say that we grab the stuff we need to grab this stuff right here, this right here, and this right over here. And I think that should be everything for this. So we need to craft all of these now, which requires these energy tablets. And the nice thing is that we should, yep, have just enough room to craft all of those. Uh, it is a little annoying because they don't stack, but uh, yeah, so this is the annoying part right here. So we kind of got to drag them and drop them. And I, was, I completely forgot about doing this, but now I remember I actually used advanced solar generators over the wind generators last time i played with mechanism just because they strike me as being a little bit less broken they're a lot more expensive to get going um and i remember doing this all the time and it was horrible i should really make auto crafting for these we'll get to that eventually but last thing we need to do is make the advanced solar generators so we do need to do a little bit more dragging and dropping i guess with this one it's probably more logical to come in here and shift click it out every time there we go so we now have four advanced solar generators very expensive to get these working um, but other than that, there's actually not that much more that needs to be crafted. So we're going to grab out a lot of steel, some copper, and then we have some advanced control circuits. And we're going to be making, if we go over to the thermal, these three last blocks down here are the thermal evaporation controller, the thermal evaporation valve, and the thermal evaporation block. So you do need some minimum requirements for these. You need one thermal evaporation controller, which is gonna go in a specific spot when you actually start building this, and I will go over that when we're doing that. You need at least two thermal evaporation valves, one for input, one for output. You can have more, but you need at least two of these, and they will eventually replace some of the th uh, thermal evaporation blocks. And then on top of that, you're going to need a bunch of thermal evaporation blocks. You're gonna need enough to fill in a four x four for the base, then a hollow four x four above that, and then after that you can add anywhere from you can add up to 15 layers of just hollow 4x4s on top of that and then the top portion is going to require eight so the last layer is going to require eight 
One of those will be the thermal evaporation controller, and then two of the lower ones will be the thermal evaporation valves. So if you want to get a rough estimate of how many you're going to need, you can kind of do a calculation for it. I did a little bit of calculations. This should be enough to make a 16 height one. It can go anywhere from three to 18. So we're not going all the way up, but we're going pretty high. So first we need to craft as many of these thermal evaporation blocks as we can. And then we're gonna use some of them to craft two of these thermal evaporation valves. And then we need to craft one of the thermal evaporation controller. So one thing to keep in mind is the reason that you wanna make this higher is not because of you know storage or anything. It's gonna be because the higher that you make it, the uh, increased temperature it's gonna have. So it goes up by 100 Kelvin every layer you add onto it, which is gonna increase the production rate that you'll have for the brine or turning brine into lithium. So I've hollowed out an area right here. It's nighttime outside, so I guess we should probably go sleep just so that we don't have to fight any guys when we get up there or have any creepers falling on our heads. But we'll sleep, and when we start constructing this, it's actually relatively simple to construct. Um, so I'm gonna kinda go over all the different variants that you guys could have. Uh, and how they would kind of work. So eventually we'll hook this up to power somewhere in here, uh, but what we're gonna start out with is a four by four base. So I've pretty much hollowed out an area perfect for that. So it's going to be going right here. And there we go. So here's the four by four base. You're gonna need this no matter what you're constructing. There are minimum requirements for this setup. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna need is going to be the four by four hollow uh, outside portion of this with the thermal evaporation blocks, but I'm actually going to be putting down the thermal evaporation valves. Now these can replace the thermal evaporation blocks. So if we really wanted to, we could put one, um, we could put one down here and one over here. Uh, I guess we can do that for now. So we'll throw one down there and one down there. And now all we have to do is just build up with these and tower all the way up. So this is the minimum requirement before you could start building the top. Um, but you could put the top layer that we're going to put up there right on top of this and it would work. The minimum height would be three. Um, but you do need this bottom four by four layer and this one hollow four by four layer before you top it off, um, to have a minimum. But of course we're going to go up now. You can go anywhere from the height of three to the height of 18. So you can add anywhere from zero layers to 15 layers on top of the minimum requirement. Um, anywhere in there will work but obviously you wanna make it as big as you can just because uh, the higher you put it up, the hotter it's gonna get and the more it's going to produce, whether it be brine or lithium. So we're just gonna keep going. I should have the exact amount of blocks that we need to finish this off. Uh, and I really hate the fact that every time I place down a block, I get like weird lag. It's not every block, but it's like certain blocks, a lot of the mechanism blocks. It's just for a split second. It's like an FPS drop. I hate that. Hopefully it's not really noticeable on camera, but uh, we're just going to keep going up here. The nice thing is that we don't have to worry about this not popping up above the ground layer. We're high enough up that it's actually going to be above ground. Oh gosh. Okay. So I need to catch this. We don't want this falling down there just because I need to use every block that we have. Okay. There we go. So we're just going to keep going here. Oh my gosh, I keep doing that. It's the stupid FPS lag that's getting me. That didn't fall, did it? Okay, we got it. I still haven't figured out what that is yet. I got a couple suggestions on what it might be, but I still don't know yet. And it doesn't really matter because usually we're not building a bunch of stuff. Oh my gosh, I am so horrible at this game. Okay, so there we go. Um, but like I was saying, it's not usually that bad because we're not building huge things like this. Hello, Mr. Sheep. Okay, so we should be getting very close to the last layer. So we're just going to construct this right here and huh. Okay. So it looks like it made a couple extra. We're actually going to call this one the last layer right here. I think we might've only gotten up to height 15 then, but here's what we're going to do. So we're going to call this the last layer right here. I do have a couple extra blocks. Um, but the, what you're going to want to do for the last layer is this pattern right here, assuming you're using four advanced solar generators. So these are going to go in the corners, which is why those are all open right now. But like I said, you can replace those with regular thermal evaporation blocks. They're just going to go in the corners. And of course, you know, you can fill in one corner and put three generators down. You can fill in two and do two. Um, so yeah, you could just have to pretty much fill in anyone that you're not going to be putting down the generator in. Now, I believe I'm going to have to be breaking some of these blocks over here just so that we can uh, actually put down the generators themselves. I think that should be good. I actually think we need to break these blocks right here. I don't remember how much room they need. We might need to open up it one more. But we're going to throw these down and 
put it right. Let's see if these fit. Okay, so they do fit. We're kind of caught in it because of where we're placing them from. But we're going to place another one down there. Another one down there. And the last one down here. So that's the, pretty much the setup for this. It's going to cover the top. You don't need to fill in that central 2x2 two two area. You actually have to leave that open. If you fill it in, it's not going to form. Now what we want to do really quick before we throw down the last piece is go into options, video settings, and then I think I want to find where particles are because I know they get taken somewhere else. So let's go under details. Is it under this? No. Um, maybe it's under animations. Okay, so just be under, I think particles, okay, so we'll put particles on all right now. The reason I'm doing this is because we're going to throw down the thermal evaporation controller and assuming we built this correctly, it should allow us to see particles around it to let us know it's formed. It should be red particles. Oh, that's not, that's not what we wanted. Oh, oh gosh. Okay, here we go. There we go. Red particles. You'll know it also worked because if you click on the thermal evaporation controller, you'll be able to see it's formed. So that's what the first thing says formed. It would say incomplete. If it's not, it tells us the height is 13. So I guess I did some incorrect calculations. It was a little difficult because I had to calculate how many of these blocks we were actually using to craft the controller and the valves too. Um, so I guess I did some miscalculations on that but we can see the temp is going up you can display the unit through which the temp is celsius um oh gosh i'm forgetting what r is oh gosh my engineering teachers would hate me but uh fahrenheit um i don't even know what that one is okay so we're just gonna stick with kelvin um because that one is what you're basing it off of pretty much each layer is gonna add 100 kelvin and who doesn't love kelvin that's pretty much the scale you're going to use for any physics or chemistry course so yeah stick with kelvin now a lot of things can be shown in here so you have the height the height is where the thermal evaporation controller block is the height does not include anything the advanced solar generators add in terms of height so just keep that in mind um, once we eventually start producing this you'll see that the production rate will go up based on the temperature but it also goes up or down depending on what space is left so if we have no room in here or nothing being produced the production rate will be zero out of zero millibuckets per tick. Uh, and then obviously this green thing down here, if we hover over it, uh, it's green right now. That's pretty much just a gauge to show you the temperature and how high it can go. So it's showing the exact same temperature as before and it's slowly filling up. It'll eventually get to red when it gets to as hot as it can be. But you can just use this as kind of like a visual gauge as to what the temperature is doing. Now, the left side is going to be the input, and then the right side is going to be the output in terms of what you have in there. You can bucket things in if you want using this slot right here, and bucket things out using this slot right here if you'd like to, but that's going to be really slow, so I would not suggest doing that. So now we need to find our way back into the base. Another option would also be to just drop down in here and then reconstruct it, um, but I think we'll, we'll find our way around. It should just be over there and then dropping down, I think. I really okay yeah that should be where it is we're gonna take a little bit of fall damage jumping down over here but a lot of you guys have told me to make the jetpack i will do that on camera very soon it would probably be really useful for today's episode uh, also you guys told me to make the free runners but i haven't gotten around to that yet so i apologize if a lot of you guys are just flipping out because they don't have that right now we will get to it i promise do not worry uh, also, you can see I got a lot of resources since last episode. I pretty much went and made food while allowing the digital miner to run, and I put a bunch of upgrades in all these, including this one, which now has gas upgrades too, which are really nice. Uh, so this thing's running pretty nicely. I added some extra wind uh, generators up there, so everything's going pretty smoothly. And now the last thing we need to do is add these mechanical pipes, add on the fluid tank, and add on the pump and grab some water for that. So we're going to come in here. We're going to grab out some water and we can start attaching it on down here so neither of these are specific right now they're both just you know a valve that can input or it can output we're gonna make this one over here uh i guess we can make this one hmm we can make this one the input and this one the output just because for the time being until we reorganize the base again this one is going to be closer to the ore processing setup over here so it's going to be easier to bring the brine out and actually start putting it into all the chemical uh, machines I can't even remember there's a lot of them that we have to use the chemical injector the chemical washer all that different stuff that we're gonna have to eventually use so what we're gonna do is take the electric pump and I guess we can throw it down um, we're gonna need a mechanical pipe to be going right in here I actually think we might want to move this up one we might want to break this and move it up one and we can tweak the structure as much as we need uh, it really doesn't matter if you're breaking and replacing stuff uh, again we get the particle effect and we can 
We can move this one too, just for the sake of symmetry. It really doesn't matter for this one, but we can throw that back down. It reforms. And now I guess we can put the electric pump over here and just put a mechanical pipe right above that. And then we'll just have to rotate it for inputting power. Uh, and then we can throw the water down under here. I love the fact that we do not have to worry about the water. We can just throw down some cobble there. Uh, but I love the fact that we don't have to worry about the water. Uh, we need to change the settings on this. So we need it to be rotate. There we go. So I think that should be okay. We can just run this along the ceiling over here somewhere. Uh, I'm regretting leaving these corners like this. I think here, here's what I want to do. We're going to, we're going to tweak some stuff right now. Oh my gosh. I, I'm going to have to manually break these. I don't feel like changing the settings. We're going to, we're going to swap this around a little bit just to make it a little bit nicer when we're working with a lot of these cables. So we're going to do this. Uh, instead of having it at a corner like that, we're just going to fill these in and make it an actual corner so that we can just bring it along the top here and it'll look a lot nicer. Okay. And then we get like that and then we can run it easily right over here and it'll look so much better. Okay. So this pump should be running. It should be filling up this system now. It's filling up the internal buffer, so you can see it's not going to fill up this internal buffer for the time being. I should be adding some upgrades to this, and I guess we can go do that in a bit. The only unfortunate thing is you can't see what's going on in here without going up to the controller. So eventually it'd be nice to put the controller in a spot where we can kind of fly up and see it. But what we can do now is take the advanced fluid tank, throw it down right there, take the mechanical pipe, throw it down there and there, and then we're going to have to change the settings on the mechanical pipe to actually be pulling it out. So we're going to have to, oh, yeah, sorry, we got to shift click and now we're going to pull it. So now this is pulling the brine out of here and it's putting it into the advanced tank. So we actually have a fair bit of brine right now. Uh, the production for the time being is probably going to be determined by the rate at which water is going in there. So whether I guess right now it would be speed is the issue. So we can head out and we can actually make some of the upgrades. I don't have the enriched alloy on us that we need, but I have a fully upgraded metallurgic confuser with redstone in it for that. So yeah, we can just throw some iron in there. Might as well throw a full stack of iron in there. Yeah, so we'll allow that to run a little bit and then we can grab out. We've got the gold dust, so we're gonna need some of that. We've got the osmium dust, and I actually already have a spare energy upgrade ready to go and some of these. So we're actually relatively close. We can grab a stack of glass out of there too. And that should be enough. Uh, Okay, so come over here. We got to do two upgrades, so we'll do the gold dust first. And we can get... Actually, I guess we only need... Since we only need seven of these, I was a little bit off with how many of the enriched ally we were going to need. But then we need eight speed upgrades, and we're good to go. So this should make the system run a lot better. It's actually going to probably put it to the point where it's going to be running out of energy now if other things are running. But I'm not super worried about that. So we can throw a light down over here. We can throw the upgrades in. The first one I'm going to throw in are going to be the speed upgrades. Just because for now, energy is not an issue. And it should start draining it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So once we can eventually throw in the energy upgrades, we should be good to go. Okay. So throw in the energy ones. Yeah. Now it's, now it's speeding up. So this should be filling up a lot. Yeah. So this is going to be filling up now at the maximum rate that this thing is going to be able to burn through stuff. Yeah, so if we increase the height, it'll have a faster rate because that'll increase the internal temperature. It also has to continue heating up as it goes. So it's uh, a good thing to keep in mind that it's actually probably not at its maximum heat right now because we just made it. So it still has to continue heating up. It does heat up relatively quickly, but it does still take some time to do that. Now, this is obviously going to fill up very soon and the internal buffer will fill up very soon too. So next episode, we're probably going to work on doing the four times ore processing, which is actually a relatively large process that uses a lot of energy. So I'm going to work on expanding this system and finally hook it up. I've been testing stuff out with it and it seems like the ethylene production is going pretty nicely. Uh, there is a very nice backup right now of biofuel in there that's soon going to be an issue so i'm gonna have to actually start hooking this up and using power from it um, but i will expand this farm a lot while off camera hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video if you found it informative or entertaining in any way please feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot and i will talk to you guys later